Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir.
to be the one to take this first brave step upwards on top of this um, untested vehicle. Voyager Mission Control. We have confirmation that the magnetometer boom is extended. We are now coming up on the start of the roll turn for the sun search. The uh, roll will last for about three minutes, and it will be followed by a, a yaw turn of approximately six minutes. Uh, the God of the Heavens, the God of the Sky. In July 1979, Voyager 2 encountered the largest planet in our solar system.
The Jovian moon, Io, was caught in the act, spewing sulfur, oxygen and other organic molecules high enough to impact Voyager. The six active volcanoes on Io were the first recorded outside of Venus and our own planet. As if one had poured creamer into the cosmic latte, ammonia ice crystals in the high atmosphere and warm dark belts of sulfurous particles in the lower atmosphere twirl and dance to form Jupiter's magnificent belts. By this point in the journey, Voyager has travelled almost 2 billion kilometres. With the odometer running high, the spacecraft was only 20 kilometres off course from its intended trajectory. This is really the, the nerve center. This is going to do the grand tour of all the dual, uh, Julian planets or Julian moons. Now look at those beautiful clouds, I have to say. Anyway, we need to prepare for air braking, so we got to retract out. Time exits once again as we plunge towards the atmosphere. But I wouldn't say so much plunging as we are kind of sliding along the top of it. We're going to skid through it, slip it through. Okay, we are really starting to hit the atmosphere. Let's, uh, moving at 8.7 kilometers per second, we are decelerating at about 0.7 g by the looks of things. The interesting thing about Leith is that it is almost entirely covered in water. The atmosphere is uh, 55 kilometers high. It's almost as dense as that on Kerbin. The planet itself is about, you know, four fifths of Kerbin, and the surface gravity is about four fifths Kerbin. So it's just slightly easier than the planet Kerbin in many ways. slaves to the snacks essentially. I mean perhaps we shouldn't be thinking of these space capsules as space capsules and instead they are high-tech vacuum sealed Skinner boxes, right? Okay, I I'm pretty sure I'm stretching that a little bit. Uh, yeah, performing the final rendezvous and docking using entirely those dinky little RCS thrusters. They of course are very weak and very inefficient, but they don't kill everyone within two and a half kilometers. This is going to dock and boost it through its interplanetary travel to take it to the target. Docked and aboard, well, we uh, deactivate that engine. We should have probably done that before approach in case he accidentally put on the accelerator. 
But yeah, um, no, we're accelerating away using the main drive system. We uh, we increase our velocity till we are able to escape from the sphere of influence of Tylo. So now we switch to the switch to just the the nuclear power that is going to take us the rest of the way. In a nuclear engine, what you do is you have a nuclear reactor generating huge amounts of power, and to cool this reactor, you're passing cryogenic rocket fuel over it. And that just shoots out of We depart, we say farewell. Larger than the planet Mercury, with its thick organo-nitrogen haze, Saturn's moon Titan is primarily composed of water ice and rocky minerals and material. In the summer of 1981, the Voyager spacecraft was now approaching Saturn. It, its instruments detected raging storms on its surface, with winds blowing at over 1800 kilometers per hour. As it escapes Saturn's sphere of influence, Voyager turns its camera back to these rings. They resemble the golden record on board the spacecraft itself. And like that record, these spinning rings also speak volumes about the past.
this ship has warp drive rings. What they do is they create exotic matter, which is actually negative matter, not to be confused with antimatter. Negative matter has negative mass and can therefore warp space-time in the opposite way to normal matter, which uh, has all sorts of interesting implications for your stress momentum tensor, which lets you manipulate space-time and, in theory, travel very, very fast without actually accelerating. We need to power off the main engine and start charging the field, the Alcubierre warp drive, right? That means we're starting to fill up those rings with exotic matter. <laughs> Now we've had the drive charging for a bit, it's time that we lay in a course for an appropriate target. Power up the warp drive, stow the radiators, charge everything, and activate. Since both voyagers will circle the center of our galaxy essentially forever, there's plenty of time for the records to be found. If there's anyone out there to do the finding.
We can't know how much of the record they would understand. Surely the greetings would be incomprehensible. But perhaps their intent would not be. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.